Making these calipers, I am going to measure heads going down. I mark them using my tools. This way, is a, it's a reference. When I look at my model, I also have these marks on my reference. That way, I can see exactly where the head goes. This model is on the shorter side, so she's like barely seven heads tall. And I am going to push it to seven. Normally, the human figure is seven and a half. If you want it to be a classical figure, they normally go with eight heads. And you divide the figure right down the middle. So now we're going to be adding some anatomy like the sternocleidomastoid. And now you can exaggerate. My head on her is actually too straight. I'm going to make her look down a little bit. And because there is no rigid armature, you can still do it. But with water-based clay, you can still make these large movements when the clay is wet. But once it hardens up, you cannot. But with water-based clay, you could always get it re-wetted just by keep spraying with, with water. I use my wire tools and my scraping tools just to briefly blend things together. This also helps to adhere the new clay that I add. This clay that I use is called Virginia Red. I get that asked quite often and I buy it locally. If you don't have access to clay, remember clay is extremely abundant around the world and you can dig a pit in your backyard and extract clay. There are videos online showing this process. It's just much more time consuming and you have to you purify it. On this, the hair actually becomes a structure that holds the head up. So when you add a lot of that hair, it's going to bundle up and create some strength. She has quite a mop on her head and I do like it. One of the things that annoys me about a lot of hair is that it hides a lot of the neck muscles. But in this case, I think it's going to work for us. I want to turn my attention to the base. This base has to have some design to it because it supports the figure. Once I remove a little bit more on that left leg, it would collapse without something on that right leg. And that's the 10th rib there. I'm indicating now that left leg. I still have that triangle of clay. That's what Rodin used to do. They created a triangle going up because it creates this incredible stability. Because I have the armature kind of poking in the back and holding it up briefly, you do not have as many issues. This is one of my favorite tools, this red cloth. And it's a shop towel you can get from an advanced auto parts. It really is some of the best things you could possibly get. The old masters didn't have advanced auto parts in the Renaissance. So what they used was a burlap sack. They cut it up and that was used to blend the clay together. Now I'm using my silicone tool and I go back and forth with wooden tools to kind of push down the clay. I do like the marks that the silicone tools create. That's the fossa for the clavicle and the shoulder. A fossa is basically like a deep depression. When you add a clavicle, I think a lot of people tend to make it straight. And a clavicle, when you see it from overhead, it's very round. It kind of goes backward towards the shoulders, towards the chromium process of the scapula. So I, I blend things together. It brings everything together. It's not about the blending. It's more about if you add more clay, you need to have a base that makes a whole lot more sense. So now creating a little detail to the head. This way, it's going to show you the direction of she is looking. I think what I want to do is make her look down and she's going to be interacting perhaps with something on the ground that's going to be supporting the figure. So I've worked a little bit more on the head. This took a while and normally sometimes I don't get all the footage. Uh, I'm still working on it. It's not a likeness. I never go for likenesses if I'm trying to do just a figure, but it kind of resembles her. 
And using a bristle brush, it you can use it to blend the areas where your hands don't get to. Now I want to indicate a little bit more of the clavicle. I'm sculpting a little bit of the hair. And this part I am going to be removing now that I look at it. I don't think I want to hide too much of that left side of the face. So here I'm indicating a little bit more of the nipple. Doing breasts is extremely difficult because I think a lot of people they just kind of plop down the clay as what I've seen in classes. They'll just kind of plop it down but the breasts don't have the same shape as a silicone breast. I think we're so used to the silicone of women these days that natural breasts have a very different uh, flow and usually they're not the same from left to right breast. They have different personalities, you might say. I'm comparing the iliac crest and this kind of goes with the shoulders, but that's where the hip comes forward and the skin. These little uh, things I'm sculpting now are the fingers coming from that right hand. She's kind of grabbing it. Going back a little bit towards the head, blending in the forehead. And I do want to add a little bit of detail to the head. That's probably going to be a focal point in the sculpture. But water clay is so easy to blend. You just kind of dip your brush in water and it diffuses the clay that easily. That's why I kind of refer to this sort of clay as almost like a painting. So the foot is extremely large because I needed a large foot to hold the figure up while I sculpt it. But now that it's a little firmer, you can see that I'm just adding a little bit of the detail and I will eventually get it to the exact proportion. Remember, one head length from the heel to the toe will equal a, about the same size of the head. So some of these measurements are always going to be the same. But I'll keep removing until I feel that I achieved the right size. And I think in the past, you guys have helped me quite a bit with some of my proportions. You know, the problem is when you are working so close to a sculpture, you tend to neglect things because you get used to it. And that's uh, the reason artists, they, they use different light sources or they look at things in a reflection because it will show you some of the problems that you might have that you don't know because you've been working on it for such a long time. So with this, you're starting to see what I'm trying to do. That part in the right leg, I need something to support it. And I don't know exactly what. So I love doing these details because there's a blend of bones and muscles coming to the surface. And this is really when you start to look at anatomy a little bit differently. I think one of my problems, I tend to exaggerate a lot of the muscles. And I think I need to be a little bit more subtle. But, you know, for me, I love anatomy, so I keep going back and forth. This sculpture is being supported just by this rod here and this photographic. It's an overhead phone holder for doing videos. You can get it on... Amazon. I put a video up a while ago of this sort of system and you can see it in action. It works pretty well because this is freestanding. There is a small kind of pipe that's vertical in here that kind of holds a little bit more clay. Yeah, eventually we're going to have to remove that. But, you know, this clay is not that dense. So you could scoop out the insides. I have not done that yet, but I'm probably going to wait because on something like this, I have fired it completely solid. And because this is a grog clay, it tends to fire pretty well. The one thing you could do, since the torso, for example, is more solid, there's more clay here, you could dig out just the torso and then put a hole, say, where the arm is from the, from the top or from the bottom and let it vent as you're firing and most likely you're not really going to see any issues when you're firing this thing. The second session for this sculpture, I just wanted to give you a heads up. I haven't been doing as many videos as I should, but I wanted to keep you guys updated. 
And so far, this armature has been working extremely well. And you can put this just about anywhere. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You know, something like this might be $19. I think I got this on either Amazon or AliExpress. I'll put a link in the description. And it's working extremely well. I could have put this in another location. And also, I can remove it, slide it out, put it in the hair if I wanted to have a little bit more support even after removing this. That's the flexibility of this type of armature. I don't have an armature inside the figure per se because it is a water-based sculpture and I intend on firing it. Another thing I wanted to do with a sculpture because you need a little bit more support. If I remove this large chunk of clay, the sculpture would not be able to support itself <clears throat> even with this on those tiny little feet. So you need something here. In antiquity, people use a uh, drapery, a tree stump, an animal, and I'm actually kind of looking into the perfect animal. Write in the comments below what I should be sculpting here. I was thinking of a swan or a dog looking up and as she's looking down. Also could be maybe a tree stump. That's a very classical thing. And she does have her hair, or hands I should say, in the back. Uh, almost could be tied. It could be another Andromeda sort of motif. It really depends, but if you guys have any input, this video is for you to write down in the comments below and maybe I'll change the sculpture to match it. But that's it guys. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next series.